Let me just tell you a couple things about fasting. It's hard to believe that, that there's a lot of folks that's made it all the way to adulthood that don't know anything about fasting. And I want to tell you something. If you watch television and watch these dinglings that's on there that's telling you that uh, just give up a bad attitude, you, you know, that's pitiful. You know, fasting is putting away food, you, you, you know, for the glory of God, for the purpose of, and the hunger that comes, the physical hunger comes, I believe that can be transferred over into hunger for God. How many would like to be even more hungry for him? Well, and, and, and so as we look into this, and, but, but this time, I, I never have done this before, and, and again, it'll most likely draw some criticism, but I want you to look how broad these shoulders are. It, you're wasting your time you know, complaining about me because I can carry it. You, you, it it's good. But, but I, I, on the Daniel's fast, it, it's, and, and we're going to talk about that. And, and uh, so I want you to understand that there's a health program that can go right along with it. And, and I heard this guy say something, it, it sprung back again. There was a time I heard T.D. Jake say this years and years ago. He said, the divorce rate in the church is exactly the same as it is outside the church. That's not so. Not here, it's not. You, you know, and at one time, when we had my 50th wedding anniversary, we did a, a celebration over here. And I don't know, seven or eight folks had been married longer than we were. I mean, there, there's a lot of long time marriages in this church. And, and, and then and when Faye, was, I, I'm, you already set yourself out there, when, when Faye looked like that they're going to go through a divorce, I'm going to have to leave church. I said, no, 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 you don't have to leave church, but divorce just don't happen here. Well, they went through that ceremony. Then Mike got right with God, and here they sat right there. And, and, and so, so, you know, that, that is a, and I believe they're happier now than they ever was the first time around. So, so not only did the divorce rate, and, but now this, he said the sickness rate, how many would just agree that, that Christians ought to be more healthy? I mean, because we, we got prayer, right? Brenda, is that right? I mean, you, you know, because, well, you just heard Susie. She, she, she was, you, you can't, a rotator cup, don't do that. Mine's good, thank God. This over here's good too, you know. But, 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 but God does that. But the sickness rate is almost the same if it ain't exactly the same in the church as it's outside the church, and we got prayer. So what should we be doing about that? Should reckon Lois quoted there this morning. I'm going to meddle a little bit today, then I'll preach. I'm going to meddle a little bit. You know, uh, Faye doesn't set me out there and let you know that I can be stern. So, 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 so uh, Lois said that doing the same thing over and over again and expecting a different result is the definition of insanity. Okay, so, so one of the things that, that, that we as Christians do, we eat just like the world eats. We, uh, it, it, this hole right below your nose, if what you put in it, and what comes out of it makes a big difference about what your outlook is or how things go. So I never have done this before, and I'm asking, and, and I'm, I'm really begging for your uh, indulgence on, on this time around. I've put out two one-call messages already. When we do this Daniel's fast, and, and, and I, I want to tell you, don't, don't, don't nobody cop out me and tell me, well, you know, Pastor, I have to take, I have to take a medication so I can't do it. Yes, you can do the Daniel's fast. It don't say you got to eat uh, a donut and a cup of coffee before you can do, right. you, you know, so, so you could eat a banana or you could eat an orange or you could eat a, a, a strawberry. And, uh, yeah, anything but a Twinkie you could eat, you know, with a. Okay, so for 21 days, we're going to do a Daniel's fast. And, 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 and I'm, 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 now I know everybody can't come to the church, but I believe in it strong enough that the church is going to pick up the salad. In a, Dan, in a Daniel's fast, and I'm going to, for those that come, I'm not going to waste all the time up here, that come to this, you're going to find out that when you put life in your body, our cells are continually reproducing over, I mean, we, we, God said we're fearful and one for made, and we really are. And, and our body actually heals us. Have you ever noticed, 
anybody ever cut themselves just a little cut maybe, but, but, and, and you look at it and it's bleeding. And, and most of the time you don't have to do anything. You can just look at it right there and you can watch it in the blood will clawed up. And in a little while there'll be a scab come on it. But what happens if you just pick that scab off? Well, it'll bleed some more and, and, then, and then, then it'll start to heal up and pick it off again. And pretty soon you got yourself a major problem because we, you keep picking it off. God gives us the healing and we keep picking the healing right back off because of what we do with our mouth. We, we, put, we got to put health in our body. Okay. So at, at, at 12, immediately following won't be 12 o'clock because it's for those keeping time, it's a little after 12 now. Uh, when we get done with this service, downstairs, we have already have made provision for a Daniel's fast meal. And what is a Daniel's fast? And, and I hope y'all won't get nitpick over this. I mean, it's fruits and vegetables, no bread, no coffee, and I, I never will forget, and no, I see, Mountain Dews. Uh, you, remember, you remember that lady scream from back over the back when I said, no Mountain Dews. You drink water and, 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 and you pursue what the Lord said. But, but let, let's, is, is fasting important? Yes. Well, Jesus said when you fast. He didn't say if you fast. He said when you fast. In Matthew 6, he said when you fast. But, but let me tell you what really, what, let me give you a little definition of what fasting is. I, mean, I already told you it's, it's, it's doing without food for spiritual purposes. But, you, you know, when fasting, what the fasting does, and I know none of y'all ever have a problem, but, but I, I have problems sometimes with the world trying to get hold of me. And what fasting does, it disconnects you from the world. It, it, you ain't going to fast long that you don't get disconnected from the world. But then what prayer does, it connects you back to God. So it's, it's, it's not just doing it without food, it's prayer and fasting. So what we're going to do for those that come at, at 12 and then at 4 or 5, you know, someplace in that range right there, we're going to have two meals together, but we're also going to pray together two times a day. Okay, well, let's look and see if there's any need for fasting. Turn to the book of Joel. <clears throat> Joel chapter 1, verse 14. It says, sanctify, and, and if, you had, if we had a lot of time, we'd go back and we'd read what a pitiful condition that the situation that they're in right there when, when all this starts. But in Joel 1 and verse 14 says, sanctify, put up a different uh, translation, Jeremy, or who, who we got back there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. put up a, a different translation there. Give me a yeah, new King James. Consecrate uh, a fast, call a sacred assembly, gather the elders together and all the inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord and cry out to the Lord. Now there's your fast right there. We, we, we're gonna, and it says that you can call one. It's a call fast. So what, you know, Pastor, I don't know why y'all picked the first of the year. Well, ordinarily I'd already be a week into it, but, but we're trying to go along. There's a lot of people calling on the Lord around the world on this week for the next three weeks. So, and it's, it, it said call a sacred assembly. Well, that's, that's going to be good. I never look, did that. We're going to come together as we fast and we're going to pray together. And, and it says that all inhabitants of the land into the house of the Lord. Where are they coming? To the house of the Lord and cry out to the Lord. But if you will read what that, their, their land was in a mess. And I don't know if, if anybody here don't think that America is in a mess, you are brain dead. Because America, but, it, it, but according to this, we can call a sacred assembly, and, and you say, well, uh, you only used one or two verses. Well, let's use a couple more and see here. Let's, going over chapter 2, verse 12. <clears throat> so therefore now, also now, saith the Lord, turn you even unto me with your, with all, everybody say all. all. How many would agree that there may be a little bit more of us that we can give to the Lord? I mean, uh, with all your heart, <clears throat> and with fasting, and with weeping, and with mourning. And I'm gonna to talk to you a little while, you know, when you go over to Daniel, they're talking about mourning. Mourning won't get it done all by itself. You can mourn, there's a lot of folks that mourn all the time. They just can, 
I'm not, I'm not going to say that, but, but I know some folks that I call them crying. I refer to them as the crying person, you know, but, but crying by itself won't happen. It's going to take some fasting and praying and mourning. And so that rend your heart and not your garment and turn unto the Lord your God. Why? For he is gracious and merciful and slow to anger and of great kindness and it repenteth him of evil. Who knoweth if he will return and repent and leave a blessing behind him, even the meat offering and the drink offering unto the Lord. And it says again, blow the trumpet. That, that was their version of a trumpet that, that we, we start off with. And by the way, folks that wonder what's going on, that's a call to worship. The ram's horn, when they would get ready, the ram's horn would blow and it was time to worship. So that's why we do that. We're not trying to see if Carolyn can blow out a lung. We, we're wanting to get into the presence of the Lord right here. But it says, blow the trumpet in Zion, sanctify a fast, and call a solemn assembly. Gather the people together, sanctify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and those that suck the breath, let the bridegroom go forth into his chamber and the bride out of her closet. Let the priest, the preachers, and the minister of the Lord weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, Spare thy people, O Lord, and give not thy heritage to a reproach unto the heathen that should rule over them. Wherefore should they say among the people, Where is their God? Then will the Lord be jealous for his land and pity his people. Well, jump on down. I, Joel ain't where I'm preaching from. I'm just trying to get the groundwork laid here. Come on down to verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterward. After what? After the fast. After this 21 days. Afterward, afterward. I said, and it shall come to pass afterward I, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy and your old men shall dream dreams and your young men shall see visions. So I, I'm counting on some of this. Lois mentioned this morning about miracles. I'd like to see our sons and our daughters and miracles happening and, and, and healing. I, I, I said this a lot of times, but I want to tell you again, healing is not God's best. Divine health is God's best. And, and, and third John 2 said, I would above all that you prosper and be in health. It's God's plan for you. Uh, can you put up, I believe it's Genesis 15, 15. I, I, I believe it is. Let me see. I think I wrote that down. Uh, I wasn't even going to, I started not putting any notes. And I thought I'll, pray, I'll be longer if I don't put notes down there. So I better, Genesis 15, and this is what, hey, hey, a blessing he's promised neighbor to him. And thou shalt go to thy fathers in peace and thou shalt be buried in a good old age. So God has promised him a long life. You know how old he was when he went to be with the Lord? 120. No, 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 no. I, mean, I, I got uh, that, that. That was Abraham there. That, that promise was Abraham. You, you, you know, uh, I, I wanted to, it, it was longer than that. I, I should have got that. But, but anyways, there's still a promise. And, and the promise that I hang on to, Genesis 6, that he's going to satisfy me with long life because he said 120 years. That's long in this day and time. Well, all right. Uh, let's, let's see. Let's, let's get down to. I, I, I want to set the preference one other place. Go to Isaiah chapter 58. I won't be there a long time, maybe. Isaiah 58. Anita, Lois, Jerry, and CJ, uh, any other preachers in that, Brenda? It's easier to preach on giving than it is fasting. Your people clam up a little bit, but when you get them a blessing tied to giving, they get happy. When you talk about fasting, it's just a, it's just like a wall come back. I'm not trying. I'm trying to help you. I promise you, I want to see health and healing flowing in your body. But let, let's pick up verse six of Isaiah 58. Is this not is not this the fast that I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness? to undo the heavy burdens 
and let the old press go free and to break every, everybody say every, every, every yoke. And to deal thy bread to the hungry and to bring the poor that are cast out of thy house when thou seest the naked that thou cover him, that thou hide not thyself, thine own flesh. Then listen to this. Then shall thy light spring forth as a morning and thy health shall spring forth speedily. It's funny, it's talking about fasting and most everybody says, oh Lord, pastor, if I, if I do that, you know, my blood pressure will go and you know, my sugar will do this and my, 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 my word says that your health will spring forth speedily. Uh, I, I choose to believe this. And thy righteousness shall go before thee and the glory of the Lord shall be your, that's your rear guard, your rear reward. Then thou shalt call, and the Lord shall answer. Thou shalt cry, and he shall say, Here am I, if thou take away from the midst of thee the yoke, and put forth the finger to speak in vanity. Well, anyways, verse 11, I, I'm trying to get off of this. Goes on. Verse 11, and the Lord shall guide thee continually. Alan, that, that was that, what you were talking about. Continually, not just once in a while, the Lord will guide you continually and satisfy thy soul and drought and make fat thy bones. Won't have no broken bones. And thou shalt be like a watered garden and like a spring of water whose waters fail not. And they that shall be with thee shall build the old waste places and they shall raise the foundation for many generations and Thou shalt be called a repair of the breach, the restore of the path to dwell in. Let's come on down to verse 14. Then shall thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause you to ride upon the high place of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob, thy father, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken it. All right, now let's go to where I really want to get to. Let's go to uh, Daniel chapter 10 in closing. In Daniel chapter 10, I'll pick up verse two, he said, in those days I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. And I want to tell you, you can cry for four full weeks and it may not help anything, but I'm, I'm gonna show you that wasn't all Daniel was doing. I ate no pleasant bread. That, that, that takes away with your Twinkies and your chocolates and your anything sweet. Neither came flesh, uh-oh, that means no deer, Jerry, and, and that means no cow, David, and that means no pig, that means nothing, Dennis. <laughs> no pig, Dennis. I didn't call Dennis a pig. I mean, Dennis could eat no pig. <laughs> so it's no, no flesh. What are you gonna eat? We're gonna eat what the Bible gave us to eat. We're gonna eat fruits and vegetables and that kind of stuff. But look, look, they say, yeah, well, I, so, so what? So what he did that, he said, neither did I anoint myself till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Well, come on down to, to verse 12. Now, now he said in the fast and he was seeking the Lord and, and he was doing it with uh, only eating fruits and vegetables. Now here again, I'm not discouraged. Let me say this, there's three kinds of fast. There's total fast. That's where you don't eat no food and you don't drink no water. And if you don't have a word from the Lord, you better cut that off in about three days. If God tells you to do it, I reckon Moses went up on the mountain, but he was in the presence of life and he did 40 days and 40 nights, but that was supernatural that he did that. And then he come down off the mountain, went back up there and did it again but he was in the presence of life. 
So, so that, that's a total fast. Then, then, then there's the water fast, you know, or say water and juices fast, where you eat no food. You, you know, you can do 40 days easy on that. Uh, well, it may not be easy, but you can do 40 days and, and, and you, will, you will not die. But this one right here is where you eat fruits and vegetables. You say, well, that sounds so easy. We'll see. We'll see. Verse 12. <clears throat> then said he unto me, fear not, Daniel, for from the first day that thou didst set thine heart to understand and to chasten thyself before the Lord. Derby, can you put up... Uh, Psalm 69, 10, he, he said he's chasing them. Up here he said it's morning. And if that's all you think he's doing, but I'm gonna prove to you in this verse right here, that's not all he's doing. He, he, he's chasing himself before the Lord. And, and, and Psalm 69 and 10 says, when I wept and chastened my soul, give me a different translation. Give me a, an NIV or, or, or one of the, when I weep and fast, they scoff at me. There, there's one translation is that they, you humble yourself through fasting. So, so, so Daniel was humbling himself. He was chasing himself. He wasn't just crying. He, he was chasing himself. He, he said, uh, to chasten thyself before the Lord, thy words were heard, and I come for thy words. Now, see, he, he was watching what he put in, and he was watching what came out. He wasn't praying, oh, gloom, despair, and agony on me. He was speaking words that got God's attention in heaven and it got his attention on day one. But, but then for those that, uh, well, let's look at it. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one in 20 days, 21 days, there was some power. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against powers and principalities, supernatural. There, 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 there was something in that day. In Daniel's day, there was principalities over an area. Reckon there could still be some principalities that try to hinder your prayer from coming, and try to hinder the Lord from bringing to you? I think so, but I want to tell you, if you fast and you pray and you keep speaking to the Lord, God will send, in this case, he sent two angels because he, he we'll, we'll see here, he said, uh, and Michael, one of the chief princes, came to help me, and I remained there with the king of, of Persia. Now I am come to make thee understand what shall befall thee and thy people in the latter days, for yet the vision is for many days. And when he had spoken such words to me, I set my face toward the ground and became dumb. And Behold, one of the similitude of the son of men touched my lips and I opened my mouth and spake and, and said unto him that stood before me, O oh my Lord, by the vision of my sorrows thou turned upon me, I have restrained no strength. But look, I wanna... Come on down to, well, I'm going to read on down there. <clears throat> Verse 18, And then there came again and touched me one like an appearance of a man, and he strengthened me. And this is what he said to him. He said, <clears throat> O man, greatly beloved. God was saying, Daniel, because of what you're doing, you're greatly beloved. He got the attention of God. I don't know that Daniel was ever hooked to the world, but I'm telling you right now, he is hooked with God. And that's what we want to do. We want, we want to get the world off us. So during your fasting time, don't focus on, I can't eat, I can't eat, I can't eat, I can't eat, I'm so hungry, I'm so hungry, I can't eat, I can't eat. How much longer has it been? It, it must be, oh, it's just been two hours. Well. <clears throat> Don't, 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 don't do that. I want you to think about, Lord, every time I feel a hunger pain, I'm going to focus on you. Amen. Every time, I, I believe I heard Jensen Franklin preach one time, and he said that there's a, there's a hormone in our body called ghrelin, and, and that's what causes, does anybody's stomach ever growl? You ever heard your stomach? Uh, 
that, that's, that's grilling. And it's, it's letting you know that you're hungry. Mine works good. It, it, I, I don't have no grilling defect. But every time old Greeland speaks up, I want to turn that focus and say, Lord, I'm I, I, as hungry as I am for food. I'm way more hungry for you. I want to get all the world off of me. And I want to lay aside every turn. Of, don't keep doing the same thing. As we use Lord here. Don't do the same thing you're doing. What you did last month or last week or yesterday, let all that be behind you. Maybe the TV set needs to be off. Maybe praise and worship needs to be on. Maybe you need to be open in the word. Maybe, maybe you need to be telling the Lord about all, but Lord, release me from everything the world has laid a hold of me and let me hook up with you in a whole new level. But, but it got God's attention to the place that he was telling him he was beloved of God. He said, <clears> Oh <throat> man, greatly beloved, fear not. Peace be, be strong, yea, be strong. And when he has spoken unto me, I was strengthened and said, let my Lord speak, for thou hast strengthened me. At the end of his fast, he was strengthened. When Jesus fasted, oh yeah, but you want to talk about some folks that fasted? Paul fasted. It was a regular part of his world. And this man named Jesus, some of y'all may have heard of him. You know, he, he, his ministry started out with a 40 day. And by the way, it wasn't in an air conditioned home. They didn't have central heat and air. You, you know, he was in the wilderness and it's hot in the day and it's cold at night and with no comforts. He endured. Why? Because he was looking forward to blessing us and saving us. Okay, so have I laid enough of ground? Now we can go on. I, I'm telling you, fasting is, is a whole way through the Bible, but I, I want you to see with just this Daniel's fast, how many would be good if God just sent two angels stop by your house? I mean, just, just, just two. You, you don't have to send a whole, you know, like he did out there, a, a whole legion. You don't have to do that. If he just send Micah and, and, and Gabriel, Gabriel over to talk to me, I, I'll, be, I'll be good with that. If he just send Gabriel, I'll be all right, Jerry. If he just sends his spirit... I'll be all right. So I, I, I want to encourage you, and, and I, you know, it's not notches in anybody's gun belt. What I want to do, I, I want our prayer line, and, and I need to mention this, in addition to the people we've already prayed for here this morning, you, you know, we got Sheila, one of the sweetest, gentlest, spirited, natured women I've ever met. Sheila, yesterday they took her in, she couldn't talk. She couldn't pronounce words. And, and, and she was so confused and a symptom of stroke. Well, they got her there and they may even make it sound worse because they, they took some sort of x-ray and, and I don't know what the test was, but they determined that she had a, a clot in her brain, a blood clot in her brain. Her, her, her blood pressure, now Sheila, a woman of God that loves the Lord with everything in her, he, he, you know, she, she, her blood pressure, I believe it was 220 over 100 and, 10 or some crazy number. They said they're not going to try to get down because they thought that high blood pressure would help push that clot out. But now they finally got to do the MRI and they decided it's not a, a blood clot. And they think it is, uh, now see, I, I got that blood clot working right there, I guess. Uh, cholesterol. I couldn't think of that word. Cholesterol. And they said it looked like a spider or on her brain, cholesterol in there. If, we, if, if, if we'd been doing a Daniel, if I do a Daniel diet, I wouldn't have no cholesterol problem. I wouldn't have no cholesterol problem. So, so, but this morning, thank God, prayer. I mean, see, we still got prayer. So as you all prayed this morning, I, I, I prayed with Sheila, and she's speaking pretty good today. He, he, you know, God is, is, is still on the throne. He's still moving. Mary Price. Don't know anybody loves the Lord any more than Mary Price does. You've know, been doing it a long, long time. I got to pray with her today. You, you know, so, but, but there's a list. It, it's, it, the list is too long. And I'd like for it to be that, that we quit, that we, let's do what we can to walk in health. And so I'm challenging you all for this next three weeks. You can find help beyond the norm. And, 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 and then our prayer list is going to be cut way down. 
and we're going to begin to walk in hell. Amen. Amen.